You've reached Temptem's endgame, but what exactly have you gotten yourself into? What's up, Tamers? Livid here, back with a brand new video. And today we're heading into the archipelago and teaching you about the Anak Volcano Raid Lair and breaking down exactly how it all works. First things first, in order to gain access to the new Raid Lair content in Temtem, you'll need to head to the Anak Volcano after you've reacquired those long-lost crystal skates. A few quick things to note so you're prepared before heading in. The new sections of the volcano will have numerous tamers blocking your progress, so expect to fight with whatever party you bring in. Now that matters because in order to unlock the Raid Lair door, you'll need to activate shrines for each Temtem type in the game. In order to do so, you'll have to bring in those types to activate each shrine, which likely means multiple trips in and out. Now two of the shrines required to unlock the door are blocked off behind the fire zealots guarding the fire to Y shrine, and that you need to defeat with an entire team of fire temtem, further adding to the amount of times you'll have to work your way through this maze. Now once you've worked out your plan of attack, we've prepared a handy map for the Anak Volcano to show you exactly where every shrine is located and how to get between rooms effectively. You can also find this image in our Temtem Resources section of our Discord. After you've activated every single type shrine, the option to raid will become available to you. Now the cool thing about the raid layers is that you don't actually need to bring in your own team. Once inside, you'll essentially be playing a roguelike, assembling a team of random Temtem to meet the challenges ahead. Keep in mind, with raid layers, you'll need between 3 to 5 people to effectively complete this. The more players you have, the more forgiving the experience is. Now there isn't any matchmaking unfortunately, but if you check your global and local chat inside the Onyx Sanctum, you'll notice players will be posting their join codes. It also requires you to pay 2500 Pansun every time you attempt it, so depending on your stock of cash, you'll want to take this challenge quite seriously. Once you've assembled your band of brave adventurers, ready up, pay your fee, and the challenge begins. The very first thing presented to you will be some random Temtem to start your party. They will have a whole host of moves available to them to slot in, so this is where understanding team building, type coverage, and synergies will be massively important. I think it's also important to go over what each of these encounters here mean, since nothing tells you until you interact with them. The Shiny Tamer is the Temtem battle. These will get gradually more difficult, and upon beating them, all damage your Temtem took during it continues with you, so keeping your Temtem alive and healthy is your number one priority here. Also, at the end of each fight, you will get three options to pick from. First up, you can add a new random Temtem to your party, which obviously helps you get yourself up to a full team if needed. The second option is to claim a mythical jewel, which between the three to five players you're raiding with will collectively need 18 in total for everyone to challenge the boss at the end. Now, these are crucial not just for that end fight, but if at any point a tamer is wiped out in battle, they can revive their entire team and try again, but at the cost of four jewels. You obviously don't want to do this, but if you can afford it, it's worth it. And lastly, receive a random bonus, which can award you a series of things to help you push deeper, more effectively. These buffs will also carry between all of your teammates when they fight the end boss, so a coordination here is key. Next up is the wispy, black and teal looking spirit. These will grant you a new random temtem, plain and simple. The glowing box can give you a whole host of random goodies from gear items all the way to medical supplies. So if you're in a pinch and need that little extra power boost, this might be your choice. Next, the two spinning and glowing orbs is where you can make an offering if you can afford it. The little canister with the Temporium icon will instantly refresh your entire party, reviving any faint in Temtem and healing those that need it. These are great in a pinch, especially if you have a series of battles coming up or you've just gotten out of some. And lastly, the scales, which is the consumable shop. Once you choose to interact with the shop, you have to make all of your purchases with the currency you've acquired during battles in one single go. If you back out, the shop closes. So know exactly what items you need to get, like healing items to sustain a series of battles, revives for Fallen Temtem, and much more. When advancing, if you're presented with multiple choices, you could only pick one, so be sure which one you need to continue forward. There is, however, one really important thing that everyone can do to set your team up for success. Your entire team needs to be looking ahead at their map to plan out the upcoming encounters. If you look ahead and see that no fights are coming up, for instance, and you have the opportunity to take an offering, that could be key in beating later encounters. 
taking buffs to your entire team early over jewels and other things will allow your Temtem to be more survivable later on, increasing your chances of succeeding in the RNG fights. Each lane has one of your teammates running their own gauntlet, with the buffs and jewels your team acquires being shared in the final encounter. Once you have 18 jewels, your team can challenge the boss, which will have a series of health bars that you need to bring down to 0%. Each time a health bar is taken down, the encounter will essentially soft reset, meaning if one of your Temtem's attacks depleted the health bar before your other Temtem got to attack, that attack won't go off, and you'll start your move selection over again, which could actually save the life of one of your Temtems knowing this. Upon depleting the final health bar, you'll take down the mythical Temtem and get access to the final chest reward. Your first completion each week will reward you with a mythical egg, as well as a few other goodies from the loot pool. Now each completion after that during the week will just pull from the loot pool, adding in a cool little incentive to run these each week and even just try to farm for things like breeding materials and more. That's raid layers in a nutshell. We hope this helped out at least one tamer on their journey. And if it did, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you are looking for a great community, check out our Discord. We have well over 6,500 members and with at least 2,000 of them interested in or playing Temtem. So we hope you drop by. My name is Livid and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.